YouTube, this is Ash here again at Flights and Reviews, and today I just wanted to do a review of the SciTech X45 Pro Flight software that is included with their HOTAS stick. So uh, it's a pretty nice programming suite for uh, more complex simulators. So I did just want to give you guys a look at what it had to offer. So anyways, guys, let's get started. This is what's known as the product page in their software. It just basically shows your stick um, and a little bit of information on it. If you have a different stick plugged in, it will show the stick that you have plugged in or are configuring. So if you're using a lot of different... Uh, add-on sticks rudder pedals and that it'll it'll all be shown on this page so uh, you make sure that you're programming what you mean to program so moving on guys this is a programming portion of the software and uh, there's a couple of views that are available this view is kind of handy because it allows you to see the stick and simply mouse over the button you may want to program or it nicely shows you what you're about to program when you drag your mouse over. So if I drag my uh, mouse over the launch button, you can see that this button in the center here is highlighted. You can also, if you want to program a button, just go ahead and click on it, and it will go ahead and highlight what you're looking for in uh, the list here. The other view is the grid view and this is a much more powerful editor this is basically you know what the software uh, is asking you to program you don't need to double check what button you're programming and then you have your modes and then your modes plus your pinky switch so that being said this is for the more advanced user so just for this review I'm going to stick with the uh, this, the initial view I showed you guys um, up here we have a drop down that uh, has all your modes um, so mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, and if you uh, didn't see what the modes were about, please go back and check my uh, X52 product review. Uh, I explained that in that previous review. And of course your modes with your pinky switch uh, pushed in. So you have basically six modes of programming on the stick. So each button has a maximum of six functions at any given time, which is uh, a ton. So um, you certainly won't run out of functions there, I don't believe. Um, basically up here guys you have a create new and open and a save profile so once you get done programming your stick um, you can go ahead and save that profile so whether it's maybe for uh, lock on or uh, FSX FS2004 whatever program you're using you would save that and then you can quickly bring it up um, if you right click the icon in your system tray by your clock so uh, you can quickly get to individual profiles with the software quickly and efficiently alrighty guys so just to program something so you guys can see the trigger is will be the first thing we program so I will click on the box and you know usually space is the mapped key for firing in any flight sim so I'm going to go ahead and hit space, and you'll see that it's entered that command into uh, the trigger box. There's three options on the right. There'll be a OK, a delete or cancel, and a mouse record on the mouse. So uh, basically you're, you can record your mouse clicks and so on and so forth. Um, what I do want to point out is the importance of these buttons. If you continue pushing buttons, say you want to enter this command, you hit enter, Oh no, you see that uh, it's entered the inner command. Oh wait, no, backspace that. Oh no, now you so you see um, you want to use the buttons on the side to program your command. Don't don't try and hit enter to uh, save your command. And so anyways, it's now asking for a uh, uh, a a simplified title for what you you want this to do. So let's say um, fire 30 millimeter. Um, and then we can go ahead and hit enter again and you'll see trigger equals fire 30 millimeter and that will actually be saved in the profile and uh, so when you're digging back through your different modes you can easily tell what you've programmed each function to which is very very handy um, it's just nice that you can uh, immediately see hopefully if you've done everything right that everything's correct also there's a drop down on the box and uh, you can switch it back to an unprogrammed fallback or what we just programmed so basically each thing you program on each button will be selectable after you go through the modes in case you want maybe the same function in a different mode you can easily just uh, 
put a check mark next to it and uh, not have to totally re go in and reprogram each mode. Uh, maybe you want fire 30 millimeter on mode B and C because maybe, or excuse me, mode two and three, because maybe mode two is air to air and mode three is air to ground. So you would want your cannon mapped the same way in both modes. So uh, that's just kind of handy. Um, these are just default commands, new key presses. Now this gets into some more advanced uh, use, uh, user information here. Um, you can basically program macros. So um, macros are essentially more than one uh, key in a certain order. So I don't know a lot of simulators that need any kind of macro programming. That's usually for all kinds of fighting games or uh, MMOs and stuff like that. Um, but if you wanted uh, a, st a key, uh, button on your stick to basically you know use three or four keys in a certain order so space backspace up arrow a or something you could program that as a macro and when you push the button on the stick you would get that macro with a single press of the button you won't, don't have to uh, push all the individual keys so if that's something you would use um, it's there i have never run into that in a flight simulator really so uh, it's not a used function for me and of course we have the original commands to pick from so macro one is something i programmed in a test and then trigger is the original trigger function you could reprogram it too at the top you'll see we have loaded profile untitled of course if i wanted to save this profile it's as easy as clicking save and we would say you know um fsr um, save and of course we could quickly reload that from the uh, load profile button so that is very very handy to uh, just load and uh, save your programming it works very well the software works very well um, you can test the profile and then one really handy thing that uh, I think a lot of people miss in the software is there's a print button so you can quickly and easily print all your commands and uh, so when you're learning how you've programmed your stick and maybe you forgot what commands on what button you can go ahead and print yourself um, each mode and what it's uh, macroed to or what it's programmed to so that's really really handy guys um, when you're learning your uh, new flight stick and you forget <laughs> which command is on which button you can just go ahead and print it so you don't have to stop your flight sim and dig through ProFlight again. Also it allows you to go into your Windows um, control system or function page for your stick and uh, of course test all your buttons uh, axes and uh, rotation sliders point of view hats uh, so on and so forth um, one thing I would like to get into is dead zones um, I think people always try and tinker with these in the sim and sometimes it gets uh, really funky um, if you have certain dead zones you want for certain sims um, I would definitely program them that way but if you have a stick that's a little floppy over the years or just isn't centering quite properly uh, always remember you can go into uh, Windows and just expand these sliders and set your own dead zone and also set your own uh, maximum throw. So it's a very quick and easy way of uh, setting that without uh, doing it per the sim. I know a lot of guys that kind of have a stick that, you know, always kind of drifts to the left or something like that. And it's as simple as going in here and opening up the dead zone. Or if it's just too sensitive for you, um, you can open it that way. You can also adjust the brightness on the green screen on the stick. Uh, as I showed you before, there's that little MFD. So if you don't want it blindingly bright, you can, of course, uh, change that. Also, you can go in and change your button color just to, with these uh, drop downs. So if you don't like the green, there's several other choices. And uh, MFD, you can basically uh, tell it 24 hour mode, 12 hour mode, and where you live and how to display the date and time. So nothing too exciting there, guys. But anyways, I hope this gave you a good look at the Satec X52 Pro um, software that's included with the stick. If you didn't check out my stick review, please uh, check out my channel and uh, watch my main review on the stick. I just did this as a little uh, side review so you guys could get a good look at the software. Anyways, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope it was informative and helped some of you guys out. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. Please thumbs up, and you are always welcome to join me on Twitter at FlightSimRev is the hashtag. So thanks again, guys. I hope you stay tuned for more Flight Sim Reviews.